Hello again Internet, Astro with Roro here. If you caught my recent live stream, you may have noticed that I live reasonably close to the center of a decent sized city. And one of the things I am often asked is, how possible is it to do night photography, particularly astrophotography, from within the confines of a city? It's pretty common knowledge that light pollution is terrible for astronomy whether it's visual or photography. So why would you bother to do so if you lived in an urban environment? Well, in this video, we're gonna go and find out if it's worthwhile. Now, living in a city definitely comes with some extra hurdles when it comes to astrophotography. The most obvious of which is light pollution. Now, I have a whole video dedicated to the topic of light pollution, the filters you can use, and how to get around it. So I'll link that down below but needless to say that light pollution definitely has a heavy impact on what you can photograph in the city. One of the things that is very difficult to photograph is galaxies. These are objects that let off broad light spectrums, so you can't really use narrowband filters to try and take photos of them, and they're quite faint, so light pollution from the city does make them difficult to photograph. However, there are plenty of other objects out there that you can very easily photograph from within the city. Two that quickly spring to mind are emission nebulae and planets. Putting light pollution aside though, there are still a few other things that can cause issues in the city. Firstly is sky view. How much imaging time can you get on an object in the city? Well, that depends in how much of a high rise environment you live in. I live in a reasonably built up area and you can see a photo up here of what my sky view looks like. It is actually quite terrible. I get from about 20 degrees above the horizon up to sometimes around 70 degrees. And in one part, I can get all the way up to the meridian. But for the most part, I am very blocked in and I rarely get more than an hour and a half imaging time on an object in any one night. This means if I want to get good photos of an object, I have to come back multiple nights in a row simply to get enough time to image one object. However, on the inverse side of that, it means if I am good at automating my gear and my photo sessions, I can hop from one target to another as they become visible to my telescope. The other problem you can have with a bad sky view is polar alignment. Polar alignment can be difficult at the best of times. Add to this the fact that I live in the Southern Hemisphere, so we don't have a star to align to and the fact that my sky view actually blocks the celestial pole, and it can be very difficult to get a really good polar alignment. If this is something that you're struggling with, make sure you check out the other video just linked here, where I go over Nina's latest three-point polar alignment, which is a fantastic tool that doesn't require any view of the pole, and can in fact be done from any point in the sky. But let's say that you have a great sky view, so you don't really worry too much about that. One thing that definitely will impact you is air turbulence, and cities are terrible for air turbulence. Buildings can create massive wind tunnels, which make it very difficult for you to get good guiding, and roofs, roads, sidewalks are all made of asphalt and concrete, which during the day soak up heat from the sun, and then as the atmosphere cools at night, they release that heat back into the atmosphere, creating all kinds of turbulent and terrible scene conditions, which can make it very difficult to get really nice small round stars or good views of planets. Now, fortunately for me, where I live, I'm in a relatively young city, so I don't have to deal with this next problem too much. But if you live in a city in a colder climate, or perhaps one that has more history, then you may also have to worry a lot about chimney smoke. Of course, burning fires, that ash comes up through the chimneys, and creates a level of haze and disruption in the atmosphere, which again makes seeing very difficult. The final thing that I find I have to deal with in the city, it comes from physical disruptions. Now this may be in the case of a large truck going past your house, causing vibrations in the ground, or even people coming up to you, talking to you, interrupting you, wondering what you're doing, or in the very worst case, maybe even leading to crime. These are all things that you need to take into account when you're in the city and around other people, but you can definitely take steps to mitigate them. Of course, there is one huge positive from taking images in the city, and that is that you probably live in or near a city, and as such, you can image from home. 
And if you don't live in a city, why are you watching this video? You should be out there tonight taking beautiful photos like the rest of us can't. So with all these factors pitted against you, why would you bother taking photos in the city? Well, I'm here to tell you that you can indeed take some incredible photos, even from a very densely populated area. So let's go out, get some images, and let me show you what you can do. Well, just got outside, and one of the benefits of imaging from your inner city location is you may already be set up like I am here. So to get started, we're ready. Let's get into it. Well, we are now fully set up and imaging, so it's time for me to go to bed. Oh. Oh. Good morning. As you can see, I just woke up and it's time to see how our imaging did last night as I slept blissfully in my bed. Okay, well, we finally have our completed image. One quick note is that I did spend more than one night to image this, and as I mentioned earlier, that's because of my sky view, I'm limited to about two hours of imaging on a subject per night. So this next image has about three nights of data in it for me, but let's check it out. I hope you've enjoyed this video, or maybe learned something. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to further support me, I do have a Patreon, which is linked down in the description. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, and clear skies.